Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Prints Kit. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering uh, the install process for the Creality Spider Hotin, replacing the stock one that are normally on the printers. I'm going to go over some of the details around the physical install, uh, give you my thoughts towards the end on what I think about everything, and then answer a couple questions along the way that I had uh, as I was going, so hopefully those help you guys out as well. We'll start by doing a quick unboxing, uh, then go through the physical install. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out before we get started is this kit does come with an upgraded thermistor. Uh, I recommend using that. Um, the documentation was a little bit weird. It kind of showed reusing the glass one, uh, but you won't be able to get to a higher temperature with the glass one, and it doesn't properly mount on that. So it does give you a copper piece you can attach to it, um, but I didn't think it was worth it. I ended up just rewiring the new one in there. It was a pain because you have to run a separate wire for it. Um, but that's the route I ended up going because I figured it'd be better overall. Another thing I want to note is that I'm not covering the firmware upgrade in this video. So if you wanted to upgrade the firmware uh, to be able to increase the hot end temperature from 270 to let's say 300, uh, I will make another video covering that process. Uh, I couldn't find any stock Creality firmware uh, that already had that enabled. Uh, so there wasn't anything from them you can just put in the printer to change that. Um, but you can do it with Marlin, so I'll cover that in a separate video. Then lastly, before we get started, I wanted to cover a couple of reasons why you might actually want to upgrade the hot end to an all-metal one. Um, basically, the stock one is aluminum. It's made pretty cheaply. There are some known issues with it, like the Bowden tube gap with filament can get stuck between that and the actual heating element. And in general, they're not that expensive, uh, and they come with upgraded uh, nozzle uh, instead of the brass or copper ones it comes with an all metal one or a steel that you can use to um, print with more abrasive filaments instead of just PLA or base PLA because if you try to use uh, anything else you can tear these copper ones up pretty quickly. If you guys are also interested I'll make another video covering the difference between like the Creality Spider and the Micro Swiss Hotin that I have on one of my other printers um, but I figured I would start with just the install process with this guy and then go from there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you guys haven't already though, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And if you run into any issues or have questions about what we covered, you can join us on Discord. The invite link is in the video description. And then we also did start a Patreon service. So if you guys are interested in trying to help support the channel, uh, feel free to join that as well. All right guys, so here is the Creality Spider Hot End. Uh, let's go ahead and start off by doing a quick unboxing. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right, I went ahead and removed the bubble wrap off screen. Uh, so now we just have the box. Let's go ahead and open it up. Just have to uh, shake it here really good. The box is actually pretty nice and the packaging is um, nice as well. Uh, this does kind of look like the stock hot end, which I will show you here when we go through the install, uh, but the same color scheme. Let's go and take this out. So here's the hot end itself, and then in the box we also have some instructions and uh, an extra nozzle, uh, some tools to help with the install and a new thermistor. All right, so let's go ahead and put the box off to the side here. All right, so looking closer at the actual hot end itself, it does feel pretty heavy. It feels like it's nicely made. And the fact that it came with the new thermistor is nice as well, uh, which we'll walk through that install process. It's pretty straightforward. Um, they are saying that you can go up to 300 degrees Celsius with this hot end. Uh, I haven't seen any actual firmware to um, get that high from Creality, but if you're running a custom Marlin build or something, you definitely can go that high. All right, so that's what's in the box. Um, I'll do a close-up of the two hot ends side by side, and then I'll probably do another video showing this one compared to the Micro Swiss hot end that I have as well, if you guys are interested in that. Um, but now let's go ahead and jump over to the printer. I'll show you what all we need to remove to get things going, and then we can go through the install. All right guys, so let's go ahead and start the install process. The first thing you're gonna have to do is, well, A, decide if you wanna use the thermistor they provide it or the one you already have. Uh, I'm probably gonna stick with the one I have, uh, but we'll cross the bridge when we get there. So let's set this off to the side. Now we wanna go ahead and take off the carriage cover and disconnect the old hot end. So we have two screws we have to remove here. All 
All right, when that's done, we go in and just set this off to the side. We got the fan connected, so we'll leave that on. And then uh, if you have a BL touch or CR touch, just go ahead and set this off to the side as well. And then we can go ahead and take out the Bowden tube. If you have any filament in here, you're gonna to wanna to remove that as well. All right, with that removed, we wanna take off the actual heat sink, which is gonna be these two screws here. Okay, with those screws out, everything was removed. Now you just gotta be careful when working with this that you don't pull on your thermistor or hot end. Um, you might even want to snip this wire tie if it gets tight. But the reason why I was thinking about just using the existing thermistor is um, everything is already ran. I didn't really feel like going through and unhooking all of it. I think the metal one they provided is more accurate, but the one that was there works just fine. So we'll go ahead and take the rubber piece off of the bottom. And then we have a screw here that has to come out and then a screw here. So we'll start with this one. All right, now that we have the old hot end off, uh, we have to make a decision on what we want to do with the thermistor. Um, there are really two options. The original instructions show you being able to connect the glass one here using some grease it provides and um, just kind of screwing in place. They also provide a, a copper fitting that that can go in. Um, but after seeing how all of that's set up, I don't really like that option too much. So I'm gonna opt to go with using the thermistor they provide it, which means I will have to run all the cables and everything. But I wanted to talk about that because it is more work. Um, but that's the direction I am gonna go here. So before we do that, I'm gonna do a quick close up on the two hot ends and kind of show you the differences really quick. And then we'll start running the cables. All right, I'm as close as my camera will allow me to get here. So here we have the stock uh, heat block. You've got your heat block on the bottom, your heat sink up top. It's pretty lightweight and then your standard uh, brass or copper nozzle and then your adapter for the Bowden tube. Um, this entire thing, like I said, is pretty lightweight, feels pretty cheap in general. With the Spider, this one is significantly heavier. Uh, you've got a all metal heat block versus an aluminum one here. Then you have your heat exchange here or heat sink and with the way it's set up, it looks like it'll be able to actually regulate the temperature much better, but that honestly hasn't been a big issue for me in the past. And then this has a steel hot end, uh, which is pretty nice. And then the kit did come with another one as well. Um, these will last a lot longer and then you can use them with more abrasive filaments um, versus this copper one will wear out with just PLA over time. All right, so let's jump back to the install. We'll go ahead and connect the thermistor. All right, the first thing we have to do is go ahead and open up the bottom of the printer. There's gonna be a screw here. Then when you flip this over, there's gonna be three screws on the bottom. You'll remove that to expose the board. I already had the case off and I actually couldn't find it for this video. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as is, but that's those are the screws you have to remove in order to get to the board. So we'll go ahead and do that and then flip it over. All right, now that we have the cover off, uh, we need to go ahead and disconnect the old thermistor. It's going to be these two white wires looking here. Uh, if you run the cables back, you see that it's two white wires and it's labeled uh, TH, so thermistor hot end, and then TB would be uh, for thermistor bed, which is going to be your build plate. Uh, one thing you will have to decide is if you want to just run this alongside the existing wires and leave the other one in place, or if you want to remove it. Um, I feel that it is going to be a pain to remove, uh, so I'm going to just run it alongside the other one because I already have wires ran along with it for the CR touch. Um, but if you want to do it the correct way, I would recommend pulling all the cables out. It's just a lot more work trying to feed through that mesh that they have. But let's go ahead and disconnect this. Just kind of push it off to the side here. We'll get our thermistor that was provided with the kit. And go ahead and connect that in. And 
and then we'll just run this back through and then attach it with all of our zip ties and feed this all the way back to the front end following the same uh, cable management system you had already in place. All right, so we have the wires coming out the back here. So I'm going to use some zip ties and connect it with the wires that I have right here for my CR touch. Okay, now that I have that ran, I can go ahead and uh, disconnect the thermistor off of this one if you want. If that's how you're running it, or I'm just going to run this alongside when I connect it. So this will just plug right in. And we can go ahead and connect the hot end and tighten all of that up. So I like to connect the thermistor and the heating element to the hot end before I connect it because most of the screws and stuff are on the bottom. So if you connect it and try to do that, it's going to be kind of a pain. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just do it this way, then put the silicone cover back on. So we'll go ahead and loosen this up a tad bit. Then this is going to be our front, so we'll feed it in like so. Just plug this one in and go ahead and tighten it down. Now you want to make sure you tighten it to the point that it's snug, but don't over tighten it to the point that you kind of dent or drilling into the material. Then the thermos is going to go in this back one here kind of just plug this in place just make sure that the old one is pushed off if you're leaving it attached and then you got two screws holding this one in place you'll tighten those both down now once that's connected we'll go ahead and use the two screws it provides and go ahead and connect this here one note here is the screws they provide are a little bit longer than the ones we took out because this is a thicker element. Uh, so make sure you're using the ones they provide. You could have issues. Uh, so with that in place, you'd want to go ahead and put on the silicone cover. Uh, but the issue I have here is with the way my cables are fed, uh, which is this default way. Uh, the it's actually going into the hot end on the right side. This assumes it's going to be going in on the left. So you can't actually put this on like this unless you were to feed it around. Uh, I don't like the idea of changing that up. Uh, so I will probably just modify this and just put a hole here and here and then slide it on so that there's no issues. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and put this on. But one other thing you could do is you could detach the uh, heating block here, flip it around, uh, so you'd have to take it completely off of your heat sink, flip it around and reattach it. And um, that would put this in the back. But I felt just modifying this was fine for what I'm doing. Okay, once that's in place, we can go and put our cover back on. And if you have the seal touch or BR touch, you can put that on as well. And actually, before you do that, you will want to put the Bowden tube back in. So go ahead and grab that, pop this piece off here, which, and then slide this into place. Right, and then you can pop this piece back in. Just lift it up. That'll just stop it from coming loose. Right, now we'll put the carriage back on. All right, with that in place, you can go ahead and clean up your wires a little bit here. So I'm going to pull these back through and then um, probably put one more tie in here. Now what I would do is go ahead and just power on the printer. Uh, just do a quick preheat, make sure it's reading everything properly. And then if you want to get to the point where you can get up to the 300 degree temperature that Corality says it can support, uh, you will want to probably build your own firmware. I was looking for some of the Creality builds to see if any of them had the uh, elevated heat support. None of them specifically call it out. Uh, so I'll end up making a Marlin build that supports it and then seeing if it can go up to 300 without any issues. Now that we've got all the cables and everything connected and uh, put the firmware in, I went ahead and set a preheat to 260. It's loading now, so it should 
be fine. Uh, then after that, I'm gonna take off a test print. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, which I'll mention again uh, at the end of the video, is the thermistor that comes with this is capable of supporting 300 degrees. Um, the ones that are stocked with the printer, uh, the glass one is not. There's some logic in Marlin where it actually has a sanity check. If you go over 285, it won't build. So just keep that in mind when you're considering which thermistor to use. If you're going to be going over uh, 260, 270, I would use the one that they provided with the kit. It's actually a pretty nice one. Um, it's just a little bit more work to wire it all in. All right, so now I'm going to kick off the print and we should be good to go. All right, guys, so that covers the actual install. Uh, I did kick off a test. I needed to print another headphone stand, uh, so I printed this guy. Uh, overall, I would say it turned out pretty well. I was happy with how the hot end was working. Really, if you're not trying to change the max temperature, I don't have any complaints at all about it. I think uh, that the product is well built. Uh, the issues I have at this point is Creality says it supports up to 300 degrees, but I haven't found any firmware for that. Um, so maybe I missed it, um, but you would have to run your own custom build if you're looking for that. And the instructions were a little bit weird. Um, they had diagrams of the hot end on there, uh, but some of them didn't actually match the hot end that I had. Um, and then the actual silicone um, piece that goes on the bottom, uh, it didn't fit as it should with the direction it was facing. Uh, I guess they expected you to run the wires differently so that it would go on the other side, uh, but I ended up having to cut that, but that's not a huge deal. So in summary, if you're looking to upgrade to an all-metal hot end, uh, the Creality Spider is definitely a great option. Uh, I would put it right up there alongside with the Micro Swiss one that I have. Both of them are great options. Um, neither one of them are the cheapest option, but you kind of get what you pay for. Um, but I'm happy with both purchases. If you'd like to see any other videos related to this topic or anything else really, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. You can ping me in YouTube below or join the Discord server and message me there and I'll get those added to the backlog.